Hi everyone, I'm Matthias, the CTO of Venuda, and today I'm gonna show you how to create an IIoT architecture in Ignition. First of all, like, let's uh, take a, a look at, at the architecture here. Um, so we have two network networks, the office network and the production network. So on the production network, we have a set of PLCs uh, connected over OPC UA or Modbus TCP, or it could be a remote site provider to an Ignition Edge device, which is then in turn connected through OPC UA to a PLC or more PLCs. Um, we have a, our factory floor Ignition gateway. On this gateway, we have the modules, uh, the Ignition plat platform module that's always required. And then we have the uh, the Sears Link um, MQTT transmission module um, connected there as well. Um, and then all the tags we are creating on this uh, ignition gateway, we are publishing those through MQTT uh, up to the central ignition gateway. And uh, on the central ignition gateway, we then have the modules um, the ignition platform, and then we have the, the Sears Link uh, MQTT uh, engine module, the Sears Link MQTT distributor module, and then the tag historian module and the perspective module. So, and this central ignition gateway is then connected to a database, in this case, a Postgres SQL database. And we are then able, since we're using Perspective, we're then able to launch multiple sessions um, on various devices connected to the central gateway. So this is sort of the base architecture um, I'd like to show today. And the focus will be mainly on the communication between the factory floor ignition gateway and the central ignition gateway and how we are publishing um, tags over MQTT. Um, and the reason uh, we have a firewall here and you can see that the arrows here is uh, pointing only upwards is because when you're using MQTT, uh, you actually you actually only need to um, enable the outbound uh, port. Uh, in this case, we're using 1883, but it could also be 8883 uh, for SSL encryption. But uh, in this example, we're just going to use the the TCP connection. Um, but what that actually means is when we're only opening the outbound port is that the uh, initiation of the communication happens from the ignition gateway on the factory floor to the central gateway and it's not possible to communicate directly from the ignition gateway down to the uh, factory floor ignition gateway or at least not initiate that communication. The initiation has to start from the, from the factory floor gateway. Um, and then I just want to mention to those of you that are not familiar with the Sears link uh, solutions uh, modules for ignition, then the transmission module is the module that can convert uh, standard uh, tags, that being reference tags, MQTT, um, OPC UA tags, or OPC tags, um, memory tags, and so on, into MQTT tags that are then published over MQTT to the broker, which is the Sears Link MQTT distributor module. Um, so that will be the broker uh, residing inside this ignition, central ignition gateway. And then we have the the Sears Link MQTT engine module to actually look at these tags within the broker. Good. So let's jump over to the to the production gateway and see how that is uh, is configured. So if we go into here, so we have the production gateway here, and as you can see, we don't have any uh, database connected. We have uh, I have the designer uh, opened here, and then we have the devices. I have created a simulation device um, just to show how that, uh, to, to have our tags in that, uh, since we, had, we don't have any PLCs connected to this gateway. Then um, in the designer, we have created the, the, the tag structure. So this is following the IC95 uh, part two structure where we have the, the enterprise, then the side, the area, the line, and then the work cell. And as you can see here, I have a, I only have one area, but I have then a line one and line two, and then we have work cell one, work cell two on the line one, and then in line two, we only have one work cell. So this is just tags coming from the simulation um, simulation device. Um, uh, and this is just to show that we have some values here. So now that uh, we have that, then if we go back to the, um, to our diagram, that means that we have our tag structure in here connected to our imaginary PLCs and devices here. And now when we want to publish those to the central ignition gateway, I can just show you that here. So this would be the, the central uh, ignition gateway. And I have here my tag provider and no tags are in there yet. And if we look at the engine, then we only have this um, first example uh, topic created with the transmission module. So no tags are published yet. 
So then if we go back to our production gateway and we want to create a new transmitter, then we go down to our MQTT transmission module. We go into our servers here. We can see I've already connected. So this is the, the connection we have met, I have established to the, to the central uh, broker. Um, we can see here, this is the transmitter. We just leave that for now, but then we can go in here and we can create our our new um, transmitter. We can give it a name here. So uh, since I want to first just make a, a transmitter for, for example, line one, I could name it this one, line one. And then the tag provider would be SCADA, as we can see over here, it's called SCADA. And then the route from where it should look for this topic here would be uh, I would like it to be, uh, I would like to look at line one here. So I would go in here and uh, specify this here. So just copy the path here, put it in here. I will remove this part here. So now it's taking everything under line one and we go down here. So we can leave all of these settings as, as is. That's completely fine. Um, and then we go down here to, we want to add a group ID. And in this case here, I want to reuse the, the same um, ISO 95 structure that I've created here. So in this case, if we move it like this here, so I would do it like here. So I would call this ACME and then I'm just using underscore to separate it. So we could then have a side A, we would have area. Yeah, let's name it the same way here. Area A underscore line one. And then the edge node, we just leave that as it is here. So once we create the new, uh, create the, um, yeah, the, the transmitter, we can see we have line one here, and then we can see this is our topic. So if we jump over to the production here, we can go into the transmission module and we can see that we now have a created one transmitter and we can see that this one is publishing work cell one and work cell two. So if we go over to our central gateway, we can then see now we have a ACME side A, or A line one, and then here we can find our two different um, work cells under line one. So there's many ways of structuring these um, uh, to map the ISO 95 standard uh, together with the, with the Spark B specification. So in the ISO 95 standard, you have this enterprise side area line and then work cell and in the spark of b specification you only have the group id h node id and device id so you have to come up with a, a schema in order to map these things around uh, in this case i chose this because then i can see here in my mqtt engine i can see the where this is coming from and i can see my work cell and work cell um, under that line so if i were to let's say i wanted to add my other line as well then i would go in here create a new transmitter, then I could call this one line two. I would again use this as SCADA, and then this one would now be line two. I don't have the provider there. And then we just take this one and we add it down here. And then we just, instead of the, you can't use the the, the slashes in the, in the group ID, you know, um, since those are used to actually used as delimiters as well. So you need to come up with your own delimiters. In this case, I'm just using underscore. Um, then once we create this one, let's see here. Then you can see here, now we have line two, line two. And if we go over here, we can see we have line two now and we have works of one. So now I have successfully um, created my IoT infrastructure here where I uh, pass data from the factory floor through the firewall and then up to the central ignition gateway. Um, so now that I have all my tags inside the engine module, then um, let's say I want to to um, uh, historize the data um, for any of these, then I would need to, um, I can do that in multiple ways. Either I, I create the, for example here, if I double click on this one, let's see here, then I could set up history enable here and, and set up the historization and save that to my, my database. The issue with that would be that now the configuration is on my uh, MQTT tag. And if I ever made some changes, um, so I'm just gonna remove this again, but if I ever made some changes on my 
production line here and I, I wanted to add some other work cells uh, under my line one here, for example, then even though this one is still the same, then the whole topic here, so so the whole topic under line one here, work cell one, work cell two, if I added work cell three, then it would actually remove the, 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 the configuration I have on the, on the on one of the tags here on the MQG tag. So what you do instead is that you, on our central gateway here, we are um, going into our default provider, and then I'm actually going to recreate the whole uh, ISO 95 structure to map out everything here. So let's say here, I just want to create the same architecture. So I'm just creating the folders here. So that would be side A. We are creating our new folder here called area A. We have our new line, which is line one. So now I have everything here. And then I could also, so now we're not using any UDTs, but it could be an idea to create a UDT based on the work cell. So you only had to specify the path to this one, and then you would actually know everything. But in this case here, I'm just gonna create the structure here. So I create here the work cell. Works at one, and then we have here, then I can create, since we only have very few tags in this example here, I'm just going to create a reference tag. So the first one we have here is, let's see here, works at one, we have the ambient, ambient humidity, oops, so we have that in here, that's going to be a, a double, and the source tag here is going to be our provider, MQTT engine, our edge node, our line one, workshop one, and then the ambient humidity, ambient humidity. So now this one is set up, then if I click OK here, then on our skater central, if I go down here, then now we can see I have the ambient temperature here that is then uh, pointing or referencing the MQTT tag. And on this tag here, I would be able to set up my hysterization, my alarms and everything for that to be working. And then even though I changed the um, the structure on the on the production line, as long as this path to this ambient humidity uh, tag is not changing, then my reference tag in my skater central will always point to that tag, and so the any hysterization or alarm configurations I might create on this tag will be valid um, across multiple changes. So it's only if I if I change the the path to that specific tag that something will break on the skater central, and then in that case. Sometimes it's um, it's more valuable to create UDTs on your on your central gateway so that you can quickly re-reference what is the path for that specific UDT. So I could create a, a UDT for the work cell. So we could try to do that here. So if I create a data type for this, so now the work cell one here, ambient humidity, and then I would just edit this binding here and then uh, let's create the parameter first. So we have the parameter here. So we could call that um, MQTT path. Let's just have it like this here, and it would be a string. Um, and then once we go down here, then we could actually just go under here, edit this connection here, and then we can take this whole line here, and then say, uh, so that would be down to our work cell. So let me say here, so I want to point that here to the work cell here, like that. So, ah, wait a minute. Uh, we actually want this to be, we want this here. Work cell one, and then just leave it like this here. Good, and then we click apply, and then we have our, so now let's delete this one again, and we create a UDT instance here. Work cell one, we call it work cell one. Obviously we could have called our UDT a different name, but uh, I think in this case it's uh, it's all right. So we need an MQTT path value, so we go up here to our engine, our edge node, we take this one here, uh, copy path here, we put that in for our workshop one, and then obviously that won't work because we are messed up there, because here it's not found, so we're just gonna go into our UDT again, gonna change this one, so obviously we don't want to always point to workshop one, we want it like this here. So we hit apply there, go back here, and now we can see that it's done. So let's say I wanted to create this one for my work cell two. 
uh, obviously that would mean that I would need to have the humidity. So not a great example in this case, but let's say I did this here. So now I want to go back here and I want to create a new. That's, oops, that's not the one. So create a new instance, we call that one works. So two. So in this case here, we go in this path. That's why it works out too. We click, click OK, and obviously that one can't be found. So now we go back here and we say, ah, this ambient humidity, um, we want that under our works out too as well. So we can put that in there. And then if we go back to our transmission, then let's see here. Um, you can see there's a refresh required. So we need to click here. Oops, need to set the communication here. And then we should see that one updating. So it updates, and now we can actually see this one is being set up now. So now we have the it pointing directly to the to the reference tags here. So we can see it's referencing well the workshop too. And if we go jump in here in the engine, we can see our workshop now have the ambient humidity. So and in that case, if I had made any configurations on these stacks, that would be over have, have been overridden, and then we you basically need to make all the configurations again. Where in these um, UDTs, your configuration will be on the UDT itself on this on, on this reference tag, so that would just reference whatever value comes into the MQT and, and keep the configuration.